We can now use our game theory tools to think about what goes wrong when we try to provide public goods on our own. And let's start with a simple example. Suppose you and I live way out in the countryside. No one else lives around us, but we're neighbors. July 4th is approaching and we plan to celebrate with fireworks. So we individually go to the store to purchase fireworks. But when I'm in the store, I'm wondering, how many fireworks are you going to buy? If you bought a lot of fireworks, I wouldn't need to buy any. I could just simply enjoy your fireworks display. But if you didn't buy any fireworks, I'd have to buy a lot. So we're both in the store wondering what the other one's going to do to see what we should do. We're playing a game, a game where both of us are going to end up buying some fireworks. Let's make X1 your fireworks purchases and X2 my fireworks purchases. And we need to know what the best response functions look like in this game and where they intersect to find the Nash equilibrium. So let's start with my best response function. If I thought you weren't going to buy any fireworks, I'd buy a certain number of fireworks. I'd buy fireworks until the marginal cost of those fireworks is equal to my marginal benefit. Then suppose that you start buying some fireworks. If you buy $100 worth of fireworks, I could simply reduce my fireworks purchases by $100 and end up consuming the same number of fireworks as I did before because the fireworks I'm going to consume is the sum of what you buy and what I buy. So as you increase your consumption of fireworks, I could simply reduce mine and keep my consumption of fireworks exactly the same. In that case, the best response function would have a slope of minus 1. I would exactly offset whatever you buy by buying that much less. But that's probably not how I'm going to best respond. Think of it this way. If you buy $100 worth of fireworks, it's like you're giving $100 to me. Because I could reduce my purchases of fireworks by $100 and then consume exactly the same as I did before, but I have $100 left over to buy other goods. But if fireworks is a normal good for me, I'm going to want to spend some of that $100 on additional fireworks. So I'm not going to reduce my purchases of fireworks dollar for dollar as you buy more. Because I'm actually going to want my consumption of fireworks to increase. That means that best response function is not going to have a slope of minus 1. It's going to be shallower than that. It's going to look something like this. Similarly, you, if you think I'm not going to buy any fireworks, are going to buy a certain number of fireworks. You're going to buy fireworks until the marginal cost is equal to your marginal benefit. Then as I buy fireworks, you're going to reduce your fireworks purchases, but not your fireworks consumption, the sum of our purchases, giving you a best response function that looks similar to mine. So now we have two best response functions. We know where they're going to intersect is where the Nash equilibrium is going to lie. So you're going to buy this many fireworks and I'm going to buy this many fireworks. We can now ask, is that quantity of fireworks, the sum of our two purchases, the efficient quantity of this public good? Well, if I think you're going to buy X1, and I'm best responding by buying X2, I'm keeping my purchases up until my marginal cost is equal to my marginal benefit. So when you buy X1, I'm going to buy until this condition holds. So I'm buying until the marginal cost is equal to my marginal benefit. But that means that if we sum our marginal benefits, they must be larger than the marginal cost. If I'm buying until this is true, then if I add your marginal benefit to this side, we're going to have an inequality. In other words, we're not going to produce the efficient level of the public good. The efficient level would occur where the marginal cost is equal to the sum of our benefits. We're buying too few fireworks. As we bought more, the marginal benefits would fall and eventually this would reach an equality and we'd be at the efficient quantity of fireworks. But we're stopping short of that. 
So we're under providing the public good when we're trying to do it on our own. Now, in some sense, this should sound familiar. When we talked about positive externalities, we said whenever someone's producing something that has a positive externality, they're going to underproduce that. Well, when I'm producing fireworks, I'm producing a positive externality for you, and same for when you purchase fireworks, you're producing a positive externality for me. When we do that, we expect that we're going to underprovide those uh, those those goods, those fireworks. So this is nothing new because public goods are really just positive externality generating activities. And so if we know about positive externalities, we already know a lot about public goods because that's really what public goods are all about. So we again get the result that we're under providing the public goods that are providing these positive externalities. In essence, you can think of these players, you and me, as being caught in a prisoner's dilemma. The prisoner's dilemma here is that individually we're going to underprovide the public good. We could both be better off if we got together and agreed to cooperate, figure out what the efficient level of the fireworks is, divide that by two and each by half of that. That would be a cooperative agreement that would make both of us better off. But we both have an incentive to violate that agreement, just like the cartels had an incentive to violate a cartel agreement. We both have an incentive that once we get to the store, we'll only buy until our marginal cost is equal to our marginal benefit and not to the sum of our marginal benefits. And so that cooperative agreement isn't going to be sustained unless we can find a way to enforce it. When we talked about positive externalities, we said the government can do something. They can subsidize the positive externality generating activity. If the government did that here, the government would reduce my marginal cost of buying fireworks. That would cause me to buy my more fireworks. More fireworks if you don't buy any fireworks, more fireworks for any quantity of fireworks that you buy. So it would shift my best response function out. Similarly, it would shift your best response function out. And that intersection would then happen at a higher level. So we would be buying more fireworks each. And if the government set that subsidy exactly right, it could cause us to produce the efficient total quantity of fireworks. Alternatively, we can think of the government solving that prisoner's dilemma by simply forcing us to cooperate. Forcing us to cooperate would mean taxing us and simply providing the efficient level of the public good. We would prefer that outcome to the outcome where we simply individually go to the store and end up at the Nash equilibrium because it would enforce the cooperation that would actually make both of us better off. So whether through subsidies or through uh, direct provision, the government can solve this public goods problem. But notice that here we only have two people. So the public goods problem is such that we end up still producing the public good. There's a free rider problem the free rider problem is the problem that we're trying to free ride on each other's contributions to the public good, but it's not so severe that we reduce our uh, provision of the public good to zero. But now imagine that there were hundreds of thousands, maybe millions involved in this public goods game. Imagine that what we were dealing with was, say, cancer research, and we all are interested in finding a cure for cancer. If we all contributed to that effort, my marginal cost of contributing a dollar is exactly equal to a dollar. But the marginal benefit of that dollar is spread over millions of people. So if I'm just going to contribute until my marginal cost is equal to my private marginal benefit, and I don't think of all the other marginal benefits that my dollar is producing, I'm going to way under provide how much uh, uh, funding I provide for cancer research. And that will be true for everybody else. So as the number of people in the public goods game gets large, that free rider problem increases in severity. So as the number of people in the public goods game goes up, the free rider problem, that prisoner's dilemma, gets worse. And as a result, the argument, the case for government involvement, whether through subsidies or through direct provision, uh, gets stronger.